But going back to the monster with Derek, um, I would love to know the dynamic between him and his mother. What is she saying about all of this? How did all of this play out from a single mother's perspective? When would she say that Derek went off the rails? What caused this behavior to get out of hand? Because I know she know. She if anybody know. knows, she knows. Because an aid has to be lasting. They have to be able to sustain it. And if you're doing for somebody else, it's going to be short lived. And then you even take the risk of resenting her because you're saying, I did all of this for you. Well, I didn't ask you. I didn't know you were even doing it for me. Right. And the same thing goes for a woman. Right. She needs to be able to empower herself and feel free to be who she is because she wants to not because of some dude. Right. It, I, you know, if you like me, fine. If not, kick rocks and keep it moving. Right. today. Today's guest is a mother. She's a mental health advocate and her goal is to normalize the asking of help and there's so much more to her. I have special guest Stephanie Lyons. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. How is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you took some time out to be a guest on today's show and of course as people can tell, we're going to discuss um, Denea Jackson, Derek Jackson's wife on the Dear Future Wifey. I'm sure everybody's probably seen the video. It probably got a million views by now. But I want to ask you, what were your thoughts? Let's jump into this. What were your thoughts on the overall interview? Well, um, on the overall interview, I will say just to kind of sum it up, we are all Denea Jackson. Mm. We are all, if we're being honest from a female perspective, I think that there's something in her story or bits. It may not be the whole story, you know, of course, because everyone's journey is different, but there are bits and pieces that I think just about every woman and regardless of the culture are going to be able um, to like say, wow, I can't believe she did that. But you know what? I kind of did that too. Like they can relate. And the reason why I would say that is because it comes from, and I want to say that it's Genesis 3, 16, mm -hmm. you know, um, that after the fall in the garden, that, you know, there was a curse placed upon a woman. And the first thing that's listed is about, you know, her bearing, you know, pain, you know, in childbirth. But then afterward, we don't always go to the afterward. The second thing was also for her to have a desire, right? For her husband, for the man, and that desire can be so insatiable, it's ridiculous. And if you ask me the desire, a lot of us, before you get to the childbirth, were born out of the desire, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the desire can be so insatiable for a woman to please him and to be there for him to where it, it gets out of hand. It, it can become an obsession as we've seen, right? Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of women that quiet as is kept, you know, when you have you know, all of this, you know, you got the butterflies and you have all of these, you know, feelings that go along with it. And, you know, it doesn't feel like love unless it's, you know, causing all this drama and turmoil. No, 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 <laughs> no. You know, so I think you can get out of hand. And I think that that comes from just the biblical part of, you know, the fall of man and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the curse that was placed upon her. And so as women, we need to be aware of that and where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we don't talk about that enough. I mean, and of course, everyone who's listening or watching isn't, you know, probably biblically in depth, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking, like you said, uh, Denea Jackson, that's that's a little bit in in, in all of, of women to some mm -hmm. degree. Uh, and considering that the platform, the lifestyle that they were living. Right. Let's be honest, Derek Jackson had the relationship game in the chokehold for a couple of years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And can I be transparent? Mm -hmm. I was listening to him too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're not okay. alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, this brother, he putting the sister on game, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, you know, I mean, it just goes to show you have to like, I mean, I don't know what to say because then I question the times that I actually listened, you know, and thought maybe he had some good points. But you know what? Let me bring up something. It's not. So it is possible. In fact, it is it, it is probable um, because the devil goes to church, too. Right. The devil knows the Bible better, better than we do. Sit right on the front bench. OK, let's be honest. OK, so I don't think that it was that he didn't have any good information. 
And what he was saying was not the truth, but he was using it, using it as bait, right? Mm -hmm. So you can have the truth. It's kind of like a bacon wrapped steak, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, he, you know, it was the truth, but it was wrapped, you know, in something else. And he used it as bait to get what he wanted and then to manipulate the situation. So I think we have to separate the person, right, from the information. The information is truth because some of the things that he has said, other men have said, right, other gurus or, you know, um, mental health advocates, they've said the same thing. But I think the difference is his intent behind it, the intent behind how you're using and why you're saying it makes the difference. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. And as I heard her story, I was just thinking that uh, I get it. Not mm -hmm. saying that it has actually happened. Yes, I, I, wa I wanted to talk to you, Stephanie, about fatherhood. And because I'm glad that Danae brought it up about her dad. And there were some things that went on there, whatever. She shared mm -hmm. some of that. But how important is fatherhood. So from a female perspective, fatherhood mm -hmm. can be, if not as important as motherhood, I would say a tad bit more important. And I probably would not have early in life, I probably would not have seen that, but as I've gotten older, I could now appreciate it and see it. Um, God is our father. Father figures and fatherhood is so important. For girls, let me say this, it gives us courage. It gives us permission to be who we are. It gives you the stamp of approval. And there are things because God has given man a uh, dominion over the earth and over everything that's in it. And ladies, I'm sorry to say, but that includes us, right? I'm just saying, there mm -hmm. are some things that a man can say that will heal the inside of a woman and a woman can say the exact same thing. But if a man says that it does something different to us on the inside. And I think that that is just because he's giving that to man. It is a reflection of God, right? God's voice. And when he says something to you can cut you or heal you like no other word can. And I think the same thing happens from when, when a man of good heart and good intent, when he does it, it, it's something different. Now you have the total opposite that can happen, like in this instance, right? Men that get that principle and they use it against women. Pimps do it all the time. Yes. Pimps do it all the time. So it does, it, it's not, and that's why I was saying when it comes to the advice that he was giving out, it's not that some of it was not true. In fact, probably all of it was true, but it was his intent and how he was using it and why he wanted to use it, right? It's for his own gain. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Not having a father is major. Um, and I will say this, she was. she said that her father died at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. I want to say 12. I could be wrong about the number, so don't hold it against me. But he died when she was young. And she, even when he was alive, she never received that validation. Right. So she already thought of herself as frumpy. I think she said that she was the um, the tomboy and that kind of a thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So then he dies. And it's hard to rectify how you feel or to talk to someone or to heal that place with a dead person. Right. What do you do? So mm -hmm. your father has died. You didn't get it from him. You were raped, right? Yep. Misused and disposed of, okay? And then three weeks later, not even a month later, you meet this guy and he shows you some sense of validation, inclusion, and approval, and you latch on to him. I think there's a scientific word, it's called imprinting. It's mm -hmm. kind of like we've seen like, you know, in the old cartoons like Looney Tunes and the duck hatches and the dog is there and the duck starts to like, like growl, right? And bark, because it thinks it's a duck, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. It latches on to the very first thing that it sees and it believes it and you cannot convince that duck that is not a dog, right? So I think the same thing kind of happened here, right? Um, and she was looking for a lifeline. And unfortunately, Derek threw it to her, you know. Yeah. So I, I believe he knew what he was doing. She didn't see it, but he knew what he was doing. I so, totally, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So um, and let me say, so there's a difference going back to the father issue. 
some fathers are present, but don't have the language for it. So that was, that's been my experience. My father, my parents are still together. Um, I have a great dad. He's very kind. The thing I like about my dad is that he's very kind. And I find myself now, really, that's what I would like in a husband, right? Is a man who is kind. Um, and he has a great sense of humor. But because he was not educated, right? He came from the days of sharecropping and that kind of a thing. He does not have this complex language that we have for emotions and feelings and validation and all of that. So he did it the best way that he could. But even though he was in the home, I missed out on that because that generation, right, is into just work. That's all you need me to do is to work, right? So I don't want women to feel slighted because oh, well, my dad is still alive. So maybe I don't have it as bad as she does. No, let's not discount the way that you feel in your upbringing too, because people are present in a household. And what do they say? My mind, my body is here, but my mind is on the other side of town. Yeah. You you can not you can be be physically present and not be mentally and emotionally present all the time. You're like the walking dead. And mm -hmm. that's not healthy either. That doesn't do anything, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So um you have that type of father situation. Um, you have some, like I said, that are so busy working and providing. And especially when a girl gets to the adolescent stage, the the fathers will a lot of time think that, well, she doesn't need me, right? That's mm -hmm. a woman's work. She's mm -hmm. going through adolescent. All that girl stuff that he doesn't understand, just leave it to the wife, right? Or the woman in his life. When that is a time that she needs you the most. Women, men give girls courage. Some of the girls that you see that are accomplishing the most, if you will talk to them and get the insight on their story, some man or some father figure gave them the courage to rise up and be who they truly were on the inside. Mm -hmm. He gave them that stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. And a woman can't do that. Yeah. Not like a man can. I agree. Yeah. I, and I, I have a I have a 19 year old daughter, so I totally get what you're saying. And one of the things that uh, with us was going through my divorce. I going through the process. Mm -hmm. I didn't want my daughter to see anybody else, you know, that I could possibly be talking to or any it just yeah. any, like she I, I didn't. So what I did was I just kept my hands clean. I said, you know what? I'm not really about to jump into nothing right now until, you know, me and her get situated. Wanted to make sure that she was good because people were telling me, they was like, hey, now is the chance for you to, to, to do your thing. And I was right, like, right, right, yeah. right. Um, and right. you're totally valid in it, right? So you got the one little devil on the shoulder saying, man, go for it, go for it, right? And the other one saying, eh, you know, so it's a balance of it, right? Because you're looking at the greater good, if you will, right? So you could do something temporarily, but it could really make an imprint on her forever for generations to come. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, and I applaud you for doing that. You know, there are a lot of men that, you know, would not see it that way, you know, mm -hmm. and I have I have, you know, adult daughters as well. And so that is important because um, kids, I heard T.D. Jake say something once he said, you know, parents, he said, you guys get a report card from your from your kids every about every six weeks tells you how they're doing. But when they get to be a, become an adult, at some point, you're going to get a report card and they're going to tell you how you did. And trust me, they do tell you. Your and at that point, you know. they're going to let you know. You know if you passed or failed, right? You know where you could have done better. Mm -hmm. um, and they get a chance to choose who they want to be with, right? So there are kids and we're used to just kind of telling them what to do and you know, kind of pushing them around. But then when they get to be an adult and they don't come around as much, you know, you got to ask yourself why, like they get a chance to choose if they want to spend their time with you or not. And I think it's a sign of a pretty decent relationship, you know, and, you know, if they choose to be in your presence, they choose to spend a lot of time with you. Right. That kind of tells you how you did as well. You know? Yes, I totally instead agree. Of, you know, instead of saying, boy, why are you always over here? Well, you better that than not being there. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Derek and, and they have three kids together. Three, right, three. Yeah, and I don't know if they're all girls or I know she talked about one of their girls, but I only can imagine how this is going to play into their lives moving forward once they move into adulthood. And no judgment here. This is a judgment-free zone. Exactly. But for exactly. people to know, for your child to know, like, this is unfolded and this has been my mom and this is my dad. Like, 
it has um, a lasting legacy that's going to impact them in more ways than one when they actually get to watch the content. Oh, can you imagine? Think about yeah. that for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, can you imagine? Not only were they created in that, in the womb, but now you have to deal with, Derek is only thinking about himself, right? Mm -hmm. when, when a marriage doesn't, when a marriage ends, it's an L for everybody. I've always been a, you know, when my marriage ended, I, there was a lot of shame and it wasn't because I was a reason why it ended. Right. And everybody has to take some responsibility, right? Yeah. You go through therapy, you learn how you could have done things better, but the real reason was because of, you know, um, cheating. He was cheating, <laughs> serial <Yeah>. cheater. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so because of that, um, you know, you take an L and I know in the day and age that we live in, you have divorce parties and people are celebrating and there may be situations where it is celebratory, right? Especially if it's a um, abusive situation, you don't want to stay in that, right? Mm -hmm. But as a whole, because if you're, I think you're a wife before you become a wife, I think you're a husband before you become a husband, you have those traits, right? It's not a switch. You just, he said, I do. And all of a sudden he or she knows how to do it. You're not practicing, you are what you practice. And if you're not practicing it beforehand, it's not gonna come like miraculously on miraculously out of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. So I think of it as a team sport in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Everybody get a ring or nobody gets a ring. Mm, that's Even good. the people on the bench, right? People behind the scenes, everybody gets a ring. So when I divorced, even though it was because of his cheating, I still felt like it was an L because it's a team sport. And I mm. think it's unfair, you know, for us not to realize that and to be honest about it and to celebrate it. Well, no, sis, that's not what it is. And it's mm. not just an L. Who else is on the team? The kids are on the team. Their friends and family that are on the team. And quiet as it's kept, they're probably not going to tell you how they really feel. And maybe sometimes until later. But everybody feels like they took an L, right? So. That's good. I, 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 yeah. And I was thinking about this the other day because, like, you talk about the divorce and how it affects everybody. Because even for um, my daughter, it was one of those things where she, she needed an adjustment period. Mm. It was a time where she's trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And because she was younger, I couldn't tell her everything until she got older. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So how did you handle that? I mean, because you and you and I both know there's like an age appropriate. And even though like my kids were adults when we divorced, but they still have some feelings. My daughter has said things, you know, here and there that they're still your kids. They still feel some type of way. So you can't just discount and think, oh, they fine. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's not fair. So I don't know what kind of age appropriate conversations did you have? I know I had to have some. Yeah. Well, you know? my daughter, my daughter was 14. So when we talked about it, I just gave her little bits and pieces that she could possibly handle. Yeah. But when she got older, even, even like now, at her being 19, she'll be turning 20 this year. Mm. She she understands everything now. She gets it. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell her, I used to say, look, I can't tell you everything right now. You'll understand when you're older. And I'm talking about a five-year gap where I really couldn't give her everything. Yeah. So now she gets it. Now she understands. And I will say this too. This is, this is why it's important to let the kids find out for themselves. You don't have to throw your spouse under your, your ex under the bus. You let, let the kids, they'll find out themselves. That's it. You, you just play your part and you let everything fall into place. And it will, because uh, mm -hmm. there's a quote that says, wow, isn't this an old school term, an old school saying, I think it's like a lie will tell a lie will tell a story around the world by the time truth puts its shoes on. Wow. So, wow. yeah. So as fast as a lie can get around, the yeah. truth takes time. Yes. But yes. at the same time, the truth will always reveal. It does. It does. And then the kids start to put together because remember, they lived in the house with you. So they have their perspective. And when they start to put this other piece in that comes in through like life and experiences, you know what I'm saying? And knowledge and that kind of a thing, then they start to put it together. And the truth, like you said, reveals itself. Right. And so like, I, I feel exactly how you did like, and even like with other friends and family. So for me, 
when I got divorced, I got divorced um, in 2020, um, in January, and then the pandemic hit, right? And so there were a lot of layers in terms of like, you already feel like there's a tearing away. And then you have layers, you know, of the pandemic, you are now a um, single parent, right? You have to deal with your own feelings. It was like layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer. I was like, oh Lord, you know? So, um, but I say that to say when you were talking about, you know, the truth being revealed, like it, it left. So my youngest daughter, she was at home with me and we had a lot of conversations. I let them talk. Um, don't discount their feelings. Like you said, you don't have to tell or discount, you know, the other person and badmouth them. Until about two, uh, until about a year ago, believe it or not, Sean, there were a lot of people, friends and family, didn't even know that didn't even know we were divorced. Because when when I did it, I did it. I, you know, made the decision. I didn't post it on social media. I didn't go around making phone calls and texts and stuff like that. There were people, literally, we would have family functions be like, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just put them away quietly because I was like, you know what? It'll come out. It'll come out. And for most people, when they did find out, they were like, oh, I was wondering about that. Like, you know, we always saw that. Then people feel like they can be honest with you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were things that they always saw but they love you and they want it to work. If you want it to work, they want it to work. So they, they keep all of that in, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do that. It comes out and the pieces come together. And yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and, you just and, don't have to do it. And like you said, you finally get friends and family who get to say what they wanted to say. Cause my, my mom was the same way. She was, there was some stuff that I, and I'm like, you should have told me. <laughs> you know, and she's like, I don't want to rain on your prayer, all sorts of stuff. And I get it, you know, your mom, friends, I get it, but even yeah. still, um, yeah. and, and that's what they're there for. There can be safeguards for you, you know, to help you see something. But a lot of times we're going to be hard headed and we, I love him and I love her. So I get it. That's it. That's it. And then the shame of it not working, right? You made this commitment, right? You all in. It's shame in it not working out. I know that's the way that I felt, right? Yeah. So I'm going to make it work. You yep. can't do it. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, it takes two. And, you know, you got to really be, you can only do what you can. That's that it. That person not willing to put the work in, it's just not going to work. Mm -mm. I, I wanted to speak to you about the piece where, because I think this is where the story kind of gets tripped up, where Derek was, I think they're out of college by now. Mm -hmm. And Danae was saying how they were kind of like, in and out like he had his whole uh uh lack of a better term i guess a whole train running i guess i guess he <laughs> i guess he had them coming in and out and they you know and i was a just whole like, train i like that sean a whole train <laughs> not the soul train the whole train, <laughs> the whole train. <laughs> <laughs> you know so uh, for lack of a better term i guess but right I thought that was an interesting piece of the story because when they released the video and the one piece that everyone talks about how she watched the videos and stuff like that. Right. Now, was that prior to marriage, right? Yes. Them that videos. Yeah. Now, when I seen the clip, I thought that was after marriage. I think that it started before marriage and it mm -hmm. continued into their marriage. That's mm -hmm. the way I took it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, so those in the comments below, because I know if y'all watching this, I'm going to, well, it happened then. Yeah. So correct us. Okay. So right, yeah, leave right, a comment right. in the comment section. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on that? And how much of that, what, what, what takes a woman to the edge to, to, to do such a thing? Was she that infatuated with him because he was Derek Jackson and she was willing to do, I guess, whatever it took to to try to please him. And obviously that didn't work. Cause. Then right. Right. So um, I'm going to tie in my answer with that, with the rape. Cause I think all of that is like connected. Right. So. Um, so first she said that she was raped. She's raped in a house with someone that someone's house that she knows. Right. Um, and when she's raped and let me say this timing is everything. Right. We always say that. Time is timing is everything, even for the enemy, because right here is an enemy move, right? So she doesn't have the validation of her father. She's raped in the house with someone that she knows. Um, and you know, it she's 
I'm sure upstairs it happens. Everybody else is in the basement and I'm trying to remember the details as we're talking. Um, I'm sure that she is crying. She's probably screaming, crying, and it's not being heard, right? So not only is she now being not being heard, um, but she goes back, she she goes back down in the basement, she stays the same night. Um and I think maybe in her staying, the way that I took it, I, I mean, we all say, why did she stay? Why did she stay? But I could see her being so traumatized to where she doesn't know what to do. She's paralyzed. You know what I'm saying? And I guess this is where I think compassion should come for people that A, have been through it or maybe have not. And God bless you if you haven't. If you haven't, you are a blessed person to not be raped, to not be molested, especially in the, the, the culture of, you know, people of color, black people, I'm saying specifically, because I think the stats and correct me, Sean, are like one in five or now one in three or something like that. Right. One in three are in one in three, I think are in women. One mm -hmm. in six are in men. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And so the thing is, is that if it's not you, it's somebody that you know, and they're living life on the regular and you have no clue, you know? And so I'm saying that to say that if you have all of that, if you think about all of that that happened, and then you try to dissect how she handled Derek, well, why didn't she say something? Well, when something like that is done, your voice is taken. She she was already in that situation. She already, I'm sure, was crying and screaming and no one heard her. So fast forward to Derek. If I say something, no one's going to hear me because no one's heard me before. Right. At the height of the very thing that is so monstrous, you know, in life, you know, the trauma of that. And I screamed and no one heard me. That is enough to just make anyone just kind of like drop out. Right. Your voice is literally taken. It's suppressed. So I could see her not saying something. I could see her trying to vet him, right? Mm -hmm. To say, is he worthy enough for me to tell him? Like, this is like the ultimate, the pinnacle, like secret, you know? Because sometimes men can be so, and I say men, because yeah. that's in my experience. For sure. But sometimes I think men forget. And like I said, kindness is important to me. When there's not an element of kindness and empathy, a woman will vet a man to see if he's nice enough for her to tell you can live with a spouse so long from a female perspective, right? And if there are traumas like that, that she has gone through, if you're not kind enough and nice enough and provide a safe space for her to be able to tell you that, you will, you will sleep next to her for a lifetime and never know. And you will ask yourself sometime, that woman just crazy. Why does she act like this? And why does she do that? She treated me like, like I'm somebody else. Why are you doing that? You will never know because you're not nice enough. You, you don't provide a safe space. You don't have real conversations. How about that? You know, you get into this mode and Sean, I'm sure you know, you get into this mode of going to work, coming home, paying bills. What's going on with the kids? You don't have real conversations, right? You're not friends. And that's really what I would like, like in my next marriage is to like have someone and I say next marriage because I'm looking forward to being married again. Right. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to marry my friend, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what I would say, you know? Yeah. And so um, that's that part of it. But to stay the same night in the house is kind of to stew in it. Right. She sat in it. The trauma happened and she sat in it and just stewed in it. So I think when she's looking at the videos, and I guess that's a long way of saying, coming back to the video question you asked me, when she's looking at the videos, to me, she's traumatizing herself over and over. But when you sat in it that night, it's the same thing. You stewed in it. To look at that video is to stew in it. To sit there and to, and to be there in the same night and to not go anywhere is to stew in it. So to me, some of her behavior that happened then just transferred into the Derek situation. Mm. that was the way she handled it that's what she knew and so we're looking at 33 year old Denea but you're talking to 18 19 year old Denea yeah and she's naive she's a blank canvas she doesn't know a whole lot right mm -hmm. um and I just think we need to be kind 
you know, and how we look at people, you know, mm -hmm. and not judge them based on, you know, who she is now or the age she is now, but that part was never healed. And so when she's talking and even if you look at like her body language and that kind of thing, I think we kind of talked about that. You can see it's her, like it's the younger version of her. It's not 33 year old Denea. Yeah. I, yeah. I heard a quote from, I think, Ayana Van Zandt. She said, at the age that your trauma happened is where you stop growing mm. until you until you aware enough to know what those things are. I remember going through my divorce and I wasn't aware of my personal issues until after the divorce. Like, so that's why I always I always tell people you heal faster when you can acknowledge your issues. So until then, I was looking at my marriage as I'm doing the best that I can with what I have. But looking back, I was like, oh, I can see where I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? And I, and I can see where I don't want to repeat those same things again because I yeah. was selfish. I was immature. You know, yeah, we were married for 15 years, but I was working with the tools that I I, I had, or at least I mm -hmm. thought I had, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So until you come to that realization of this is where I went wrong, I think you can sit in that that trauma longer because you're just unaware. Exactly, exactly. And you know what? And I think you have to, unfortunately, life comes at you. And until something happens that hurts enough for you to want to know what the truth is, right? Because I had to do it too. It hurt enough to where I went looking and searching for the answer. I was like, okay, this has hurt. And it hurt enough to where I'm like, I'm never going through this again. I'm never going to cross this again. I'm going to be the better version of myself. And little Steph has got to grow up. It's time to do some growing up. We're not coming back this way, <laughs> you know? So yeah. I think until you, so you seek and ye shall find, you know? So there's something about that journey and the finding and that it hurts enough to where you don't want to repeat it, right? And when you don't want to repeat it bad enough, now you have what it takes or the will that it takes to stop that behavior and to switch, right? And to pick up a different pattern. But unfortunately, again, as human beings, it's got to hurt enough for us to really not want to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because so, yeah, growing up, um, you know, the old the old school heads say they ain't ready for change yet. That part. Yeah. That part. But you know what else they say? Nothing like a bought lesson. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so and you know those terms i didn't get them when i was younger but now that i'm older i'm like oh that's what they were saying mm -hmm. you know so whenever i see people doing stuff and they if you know, somebody asks me a question they inbox me about stuff and it's the same stuff over and over again i say it ain't hurt enough yet that that part yeah you're not you're not tired yet oh you're not sick and tired of being sick and tired yeah you're not tired yet mm -mm. so that's when i can kind of just spread on that grace and be like you're not ready yet <laughs> um, and until then, you know, uh, we're a work in progress. I, I wanted to talk to you also about um, with the interview, because I think it was in the second part. But what? Well, maybe it's in the first part. I was kind of baffled about Derek filing for the divorce opposed to her. But I think that's a narcissistic move. And I'm not saying that yeah. like because I know we use that term a lot now. Right. Yeah. Um, and let me say this, um, a person can have narcissistic traits. I think he was probably the epitome because like, he just had spotlight, notoriety, money, fame from it. Right. Um, but I think you can have characteristics also without being like clinically diagnosed. And I say narcissistic, maybe that's just ego, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not a therapist, so I don't know, you know, what is and what isn't. But I think that that was a bold move. It was almost like you're wrong and I'm right. So I'm going to beat you to the punch, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe it has something to do with who he was. Maybe it would look better for him when it got out in the news that he filed before she did. Mm -hmm. Right. Marketing wise. Mm -hmm. I don't know what was going through his head, but I think it was great that she counter filed. Right. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of taken aback with that as well. Yeah. You know. I, I was wondering about that. I said, you know, going through or not being judgmental. I'm like, if you're going through this stuff, I would have been quick to, you know. And and I will say, too, with Derek, because you got to think, Derek has 
the world eating out of the palm of his hand. Mm -hmm. He he has the looks, he has the physique, he has the the words, and it's I don't know Stephanie how, and I'm not trying to defend him, but I don't know how many people have the necessary discipline to not act a butthole with that kind of power. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know too many people, Stephanie, who can, I mean, think about it. And then I always tell people this, when was the last time you told yourself no? Mm. I mean, it, it can be something as simple as, uh, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. Oreo cookie, right? If you look at the serving size of Oreo cookies, I think it's three, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's three cookies and it's like a hundred. How do you know that, Sean? <laughs> because I did the work. I, I did it, right? I was like, these things are so good. I should not be eating these things like this. So mm -hmm. I said, let me just do the homework on this real quick. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at these cookies and I'm thinking it's probably like so many in the past. And I'm just, this is my Oreo theology, okay? Right, like, right. All I'm saying is if a serving size is three cookies, can you eat a serving size and put them up? So that's kind of like a Lay's potato chip. No one can eat just one. Right. <laughs> right. So so I'm saying all that to say is to have a, the discipline to say, no, I'm not going to treat my spouse like this. No, I'm not going to do that. To have that kind of discipline, very few people have it. And I'm not saying what he did was OK, but to have the world eating out the palm of your hand, the, yeah. I'm not going to say the world, more of our, our culture. Right. Right. You selling right. millions of books. You got the houses, the cars, you got everything. People, right. I, you know, I don't know too many people who could have said, no, I need to keep myself together. Because when my pastor said one time, he said, never let your gift take you where your gift can't keep you. Mm. And he, he blew the bag out of character. Yes. Yes. But I think that he had those traits to begin with. Like, it's kind of like feeding the monster. Right. Right. So it's already there and it just kind of gets bigger and bigger because I think what makes all of this so like shocking is that there like his acts were monstrous. They were predatory. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. They were predatory. They were monstrous. And all of us have the ability um, to be that same person. Right. And so a lot of times we keep, what are the monsters usually? We keep them in the closet. We keep them under the bed, right? We hide them. But the monster is out the box. And it's just, it's like the Hulk. It was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And True. so we get to see the green monster, right? And we're, we're just kind of like, oh my God, you know? And so the thing is, is that there are a lot of, this society is breeding a lot of Derek Jackson. And who knows how Derek started out, right? There are a lot of men, well, she wouldn't pay me no mind. I used to be this little scrawny kid. Now he discovers weight, right? You discover what women want to hear. You know, you become this jock. You know, you become empowered. We're feeding the monster, right? And every day, all of these girls, and you got beautiful women, and that's something else too. Let me just say this. There's always going to be another beautiful woman. Say that again. Okay. There's always going to be another beautiful woman. So at some point, I think men need to just say, okay, enough is enough, right? My woman is beautiful. She is enough. Be able to admire and look, but don't stare. Don't take it and, and make it and internalize it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like it's always going to be another beautiful woman and it's always going to be another fine man because I think men just, you know, they stay on beauty and so many beautiful women, but don't think that your wife isn't being hit on by another man because she's beautiful to somebody else too. And quiet as his cat, she's probably going, oh, wait, look at that chest. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. But see, yeah. a real woman, she's not going to say it. She'll never let you know. <laughs> never let you know. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. So don't think you're the only one is what I'm saying. Don't mm -hmm. think that what you're thinking that she hasn't thought as well. But you mm -hmm. have to get up and choose each other every day, right? But going back to the monster with Derek, um, I would love to know the dynamic between him and his mother. What is she saying about all of this? How did all of this play out from a single mother's perspective? When would she say that Derek went off the rails? What caused this behavior to get out of hand? Because I know she know. 
she if anybody knows, know, she knows. Mm. And, and we talked about this uh, before. We talked about this before the recording. I don't think, and, and, and shout out to the single moms. Much love. Yeah. We love you all. Yes. But I don't think they understand the importance of having that family nucleus um, having them, and I'm not saying ha I'm not saying you got to be in your bed, but I'm just saying a necessary right. man in your life to help him, whether if it's a coach or pastor, whoever. Because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be the man who I am today without my pastor or without my brother, right? Yeah, yeah. These people who are willing to take time with me. Um, so I'm saying all that to say is um, single moms when they're ra raising boys, mm -hmm. they can be hurt so bad that their mom and dad didn't make it. Mm. Or if she's still trying to find herself, hmm. if she's still trying to find herself, your son takes that ride with you. Okay, and stay right there and tell me more about that. I because I, I'm interested. <laughs> well, well, I mean, a lot of times when we don't recognize who we are, right? We we take this journey where. We're trying to find ourselves. We're trying to find validation in men or things or women or whatever. Mm. When we're taking that trip with our mom, mm -hmm. that's doing something to us because as mom, mom can never do any wrong. So, and it's it's unfair to you, but at the same time, when little Larry or whoever, when he's seeing mommy making these mistakes, it's breeding anger in him because he look at his mom as the world. So you do have some, and this isn't all, but there are some that some men, they like, I'm going to get even with women or they believe that mm. women supposed to cater to me because mama catered to me. My mm. clean my room. Mama spoiled me to death. Mama didn't let me do anything on my own. So she carried me. Uh, I never had to walk. Mama always carry me. So all that does is translate into Derek's and I'm throwing on my air quotes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to say this uh, just to be a little candid. I will ask people, I'll say, who raising these F boys? You know, we got the <laughs> F boys. Who raising them? I'm not saying this is a shot to, to single moms. All I'm saying is because when God created us, he created us to mom and dad to raise our kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I get it. You know, we have single parents. A lot of times, you know, the, the, your, your child is the flower girl already at the wedding right. when right. it should have been a divine order. So mm -hmm. if if single moms can recognize that, that my son needs a male figure, a positive male figure yes. in his life, mm -hmm. it can kind of help balance things because that man can teach that young boy stuff that his mom can't. Mm hmm. And and unfortunately, like I say, Stephanie, the bad thing is men, they see mom as flawless. So any mistakes y'all make, we like, no, nah, mama. But see, but see, that's the problem, though, Sean. And I, and, I, and I hear what you're saying. And I appreciate you being candid and being honest. That's a lot of weight. When I hear mm -hmm. when I hear that, that is a lot of weight, like for a woman to carry. <sighs> Because we keep saying that nobody is perfect and we have to extend grace like to people. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're right. And the only reason why I'm saying this, and, and you are right, it is un is an unfair burden for anybody to carry. Nobody should be everything except Christ, right? I get that. But, and, and allow me to say this, mm -hmm. women, women are such on a high pedestal. Mm. That y'all aren't, that y'all can make mistakes. Men, when we grow up, we automatically know we ain't, you know, <laughs> we automatically know because our mama telling us, you look like your daddy, your daddy ain't no good. You, you know, <laughs> men, we come out the gate knowing that we're not on a pedestal like women. So women get that preferred treatment. So even through the eyes of our kids, we see that too. Is that damaging in a way? I mean, and I get that as a kid, right? Because you're speaking from a child's perspective and a child is limited, right? Growing up, once we've gotten older, should there be something to, I guess, kind of dispel that? I guess I'm hearing you and I'm kind of, and go with me for a second. 
Like I can hear men saying, you know, well, you put her on a pedestal and I, and I understand being put on a pedestal is an honor, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not coming from that perspective. And as a woman, I appreciate that. That is truly an honor. It just doesn't give room for me to be human. It doesn't give room for my flaws, for my mistakes. It doesn't give room for me to be goofy. <laughs> it doesn't give room. It just kind of like you have to always, you know, sit up straight and do this and do that, you know. And then, you know, again, being a woman in the dating scene, you can be too much, right? And you're on that pedestal and men won't date you, right? Because they're like, well, it, lo it looks like I don't want to fail. I don't think that I could do that, right? I don't think that I can make her happy. And I don't know if that's kind of left over from the way men think as a child and you don't necessarily kind of resolve it or come to some sort of mature epiphany later in life, right? And I don't know if that's getting all over the place, but I'm just listening to that. And as I hear you saying it, like it feels weighty. If that makes sense. It, it does. And, and and again, it's not fair. But if we think about everything a man does is for a woman. I agree. It, it, so there goes the pedestal thing, right? Wow. Think about, I think about it like that. Yeah, right. Think about the kid. Think about the kid who's nine or ten and he's just being a boy. I mean, he's musty. <laughs> <laughs> he forgetting to wash his face. Yeah. Two strings untied, holes in his, just lips crusty, everything, right? Right. His mama telling him everything. Boy, if you don't tie them shoes or if you don't brush your hair. Mm -hmm. But one day, Stephanie. Yeah. He's your girl that he like. Yeah. He, he approaches her and she like, boy, your breath stink. The day that you see your son start to brush his hair and stuff like that, he got a whiff of a woman. <laughs> a whiff? A whiff, yeah. <laughs> He got a smell of a woman. And, <laughs> and then that changes the whole game. Wow. So everything. So and one thing I'm trying to teach my boys is it, it's OK to admire women. Women are, I, I believe, when God created y'all, he knew exact God. <laughs> Praise the Lord for women, right? <laughs> y'all are phenomenal. But men, everything we do is for you. So I, I want to get my boys to a place where do it because you have enough respect for yourself like do it yes, for yes. you don't do it for a woman because you will be let down and then yes. you can be you can be more complete as a man when you have these morals and values for you you're doing it for you not yes. just her because you're putting too much weight on her and you're giving her too much power over on your own that part that part. And I, I admonish you for that because I, I think it's great that you're raising young men with that because an aid has to be lasting. They have to be able to sustain it. And if you do them for somebody else, it's going to be short lived. And then you even take the risk of resenting her because you're saying, I did all of this for you. Well, I didn't ask you. I didn't know you were even doing it for me. Right. And the same thing goes for a woman. Right. She needs to be able to empower herself and feel free to be who she is because she wants to, not because of some dude, right? It, I, you know, if you like me, fine. If not, kick rocks and keep it moving, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I've raised two girls. I don't have any sons. I've always wanted sons. Um, but um, I, I have two girls. They're adults. And I've raised them, you know, the same way in terms of being who you are, being able to value that. Let's see who that is. I have one that's in journalism, um, television and journalism. Um, she works for a Fox 25 station. I have another one that's in medicine, but they exhibited those behaviors when they were kids. And it was being able as much as I could, because I'm not their father, right? To say, girl, you are phenomenal. Let's go see if we can cultivate this. If this is really what you want to do and this is who you're about. And I would see the behavior over and over and over. We keep coming up, right? It was a pattern. But to be able to do that and to be happy with that and find somebody that likes you for who you are and what you, you know, I don't want to say what you bring to the table. I hate that. That whole bring, what do you bring to the table? I hate that. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. No, I hear you. I hear you. Is there anything because there is some questions I want to ask you outside of 
the mm -hmm. Derek Jackson. I just thought it was a great discussion to have. Um, so is there anything that you saw that stood out to you or might be applicable to your own life concerning this Derek and and uh and his ex-wife thing? So I will say this. Because there seems to be what we see here is the whole phenomena of Derek Jackson, the cool jock that picked the naive girl, the nice girl, right? Mm -hmm. That dynamic has been going on forever, Sean. That is not new to us. No. I was the naive girl. I was the nice girl. Um, and I see now, and just like Derek, she felt validated by Derek. Um, and she felt like she needed him, right, to give that stamp of approval, like he gave her something. But she doesn't realize that Derek picked her because she already had the something. She mm -hmm. didn't see it, but he did. Mm -hmm. But him being in a predatory state of mind saw that he could take that and use it and manipulate it. Now she's woken up and you never, she's never going to sleep ever again. Trust that. <laughs> she's yeah. never sleeping on that again. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when we think about Ike and Tina Turner, right? Same dynamic, right? You know, but once she woke up and she saw you need me, like I really have this. And it was almost like, when when she figured it out, Ike was upset that she realized it. Yeah. It was almost like, oh my God, she sees it. She figured it out. He don't want you to figure it out. I think in that dynamic, when you have that kind of spirit in a man, he the one thing he doesn't want her to do is to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so for me in my life, that was a thing. I finally figured it out. Mm -hmm. And when I figured it out, I was like, wow, you yeah. know? Um, and that was the thing I think that kind of gave me the gasoline to be able to kind of, you know, forge ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's sad, but you've had that. And, um, I think we need to educate young girls more, especially the young girls that are the naive ones that do seem like they're quiet. They're not saying anything. They truly are green. You look at her and people are tearing her apart because they're like, how could a woman, a grown ass woman, excuse me. <laughs> no, be keep it real be that naive but it goes on it really does exist she has to be aware of what's out there how first of all how precious it is that she is a blank slate that she is that naive that she has not been defiled right that is such a precious rare gift but it's not for everyone you have to be careful who you give that to and i think in the church we need to take more time to be able to make women, young girls aware that that is a precious gift, you have the choice as to who you give it to, to know how in demand it is. Because mm -hmm. in today, where everybody is on the internet, everybody trying to be seen and naked, that is rare, man. Like people are looking for you. Good and bad men are looking for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And There's sharks out here. Yeah, you have to know. And so we're not doing enough to teach that and to make those girls who are frumpy, who, you know, maybe are sitting, you know, in the corner, teach them the difference between attraction, adorning themselves, right? Using what you have, right? So that you feel better about yourself. We automatically put it in with the Jezebel thing and think that everything is sexual and it's not. It's not, you know? So. Yeah, so I would say as far as like myself, it was the whole blank slate, naive, didn't know, someone else saw it, and they knew. Mm -hmm. And they were yeah. like, yeah, I want her. And just mm -hmm. like Derek, they will pick you because I want her. Um, she's flexible. Um, they will choose to share their DNA with you. You will be the qualified mother, right? Um, but they will play with everybody else. But even they know when it comes to who they have by their side, who's going to be the mother of their children, they don't want what they're going to play with. They want something that hasn't been defiled, right? Yep, that's so true. I totally agree. And a woman can get that game from her dad. Yeah, if, he, if she if has. He, if yeah. He, yeah. Or or even somebody who, who, who don't want to sleep with you, you know, just yeah. somebody who literally cares. And I think what happens, especially with fathers and just even with their boys, I think it's important. Or no, before I get into that, I want to say with fathers talking to their daughters about just putting them on game, 
let be honest with your daughter. Tell your daughter, I was once an F boy instead of you talking to her as like I was this great dude. No, sh tell your daughter how trash you were. Okay, but and I think they but, can relate. I think so, but let's be honest and say that right, right there, Sean. Um, because how many of them, just like you were saying, okay, how many men really want to be seen like that with their daughters? Men want to be honored. They don't want to look bad. They constantly deal with shame and are quick to lie about something and sweep it under the rug. And I say men, because I'm talking about men, but women too. So please don't come for me. No, women I'm do the same yeah. thing, right? <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, do you have daughter? You, yes, you said you have a 19 year old daughter. daughter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think maybe you've come, you're one of the exceptions that you've come into, like you say, now knowing more about yourself and that behavior, being able to share that. There are a lot of men that aren't going to be emotionally available. They're not going to have the, the vocabulary for it. And like you said, if they already think and you're raised, you know, well, boys are just kind of, you know, the messed up, you know, kind of all over the place. Does he really want the, his little girl, right? His little girl to see him like that. So is that like realistic? I, I think it is. I just think it depends on the man. I think if if you are, if if you really want the best for your daughter, because what I realize is kids relate to you when you put yourself under the microscope. And that's for anybody, right? When mm -hmm. you tell people how broken you are um, within a safe place, right? Yes. People are more likely to open to you. So I think it's important for fathers, if you can put yourself out there and be honest, if you really care about where she's trying to go and what she's mm -hmm. trying to do, be honest with her and be like, look, daddy didn't always have it together. I was out here doing, you know, it's just by the grace of God that I am who I am today. And I had right. to learn some things, but be careful because I was that guy yeah. opposed to, oh, all men are dogs, all men are trash, but I'm the perfect dude. I'm your dad. So it kind of put the blinders over your child because your child mm -hmm. is like, because kids are smarter than we think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because your, your daughter can be thinking, well, daddy, how do you know all this if you've been perfect? <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> whatever that's worth, right? I'm just like, <laughs> okay. Um, but there are some other things I do want to ask you real quick before we end the show because um, this has really been good. And I ask all my all my guests these questions i would like to know what you think mm -hmm. um, from seeing your parents relationship what did it teach you about marriage oh that's good um it's taught me um well i'll say good and bad mm -hmm. um so i think my parents have a very traditional marriage mm -hmm. i tend to be the same way um and i'm okay with that um but i have to recognize that the dynamic that my parents have does not is not necessarily the same in today's society, right? So I have to allow some room and some grace for that, right? Because we tend to think, well, let me say this. Um, the other thing that it's also taught me is not only through my parents, but my grandparents, specifically my grandmother. It was her pleasure to serve my grandfather. Mm. And when I say that, um, because he always worked. She was the grandmother in the neighborhood that kept, you know, different ones, kids. Right. Um, and she would work with him with his business and go pick up his check and take care of, you know, all of that. But both of them, I think, enjoy marriage. I too enjoy the institution of marriage. Right. Um, they work as a team. So I think it taught me, um, teamwork. It taught me that there is no shame in a woman being a woman and um, enjoying that, whether it be keeping a clean house, learning how to cook. So many people don't know how to cook. They don't enjoy it. You know, I enjoy it because I like to eat, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, I mean, there is a strength in femininity. And so I would say that they taught me the strength of that. Not only did they teach it to me verbally, but I could see it. My grandparents, a lot of people didn't even know their first name because they called each other honey and baby. That's all they knew was honey and baby, you know? So, I mean, I would say from that perspective, and it's hard for young girls, bless their hearts, to be in marriages when you've not seen it, Sean. Mm -hmm. There are some things in marriage that I can say that I've seen 
And hopefully my girls have seen that touch when you've had an argument, because they've argued, right, and yes, fell out. Yes. But my mm -hmm. grandmother says, not how you fall out, it's about how you fall back in, right? Mm -hmm. So men have a different language. So he may not say that he's sorry, but he may touch her on the small of her back. He may pat her on the butt, right? He may come and whisper in her ear. She's smiling and she's laughing and everything is cool, right? Yeah. But you got to know your man. That's a dynamic that you don't see if it's not in your environment, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that those are little things that girls need to learn, you know? Um, and he may do that or she may do the same. You know, he's upset with her, but she fixes his plate. It was such an honor because um, my ex, he has a good friend. And he said, the first time that I saw you fix his plate, and I saw how you served him. You were the idea of the kind of woman that I wanted, kind of like the prototype. Like I watched what you did for him and I wanted that same thing. And that is an honor for somebody to tell you, but I got it from my grandparents and from my parents, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say to answer your question, that's what it taught me. Mm, I love it. What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Mm. <laughs> oh okay this is gonna beat me up in the head too um oh god okay i'm gonna admit this we don't listen we don't listen we don't we we all about this running of the mouth and stuff like that we don't listen period <laughs> all right <laughs> we don't listen. Hey, I hear you. You know, I mean, I, I yeah. <laughs> so, so what can women do to listen? Because I, from what I've seen, and I want you to answer, but women listen to their girlfriends. They be on the phone and they be girl, or they don't listen to their girlfriends either. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I it's a different type. It's a different type, right? So with girlfriends, we talk to pour out, right? When I say we don't listen, I've become more sensitive in how men talk and communicate. Um, men don't communicate enough verbally, right? Because that's the way that we get it. But if I want a man, I need to learn how to speak man. If a man wishes to be with a woman, he needs to learn how to speak woman, right? Right. You're not going to go to some other country and expect for them to speak your language. No, you better pick up a Google translator or something if you expect, right, to get what you need in another country. So I've learned to listen more to men and what they say and what they don't say. And then not just that, but to take what they say and to take it at face value. Sometimes we take it and we want to dissect it. We want to translate it into female language, and it's not even the same thing. Um you guys talk a lot non-verbally. And if you can just be quiet and sit back and watch him, he's telling you everything you need to know. Or sometimes like what I'll do um, is to give men a space just to talk. Too many times when you meet someone that's new, you know, she's saying what well, she wants in a man and where she going to be and all these degrees and stuff. No, I want to know about who you are. And if you just give people a lot of times, because most people like to talk about themselves, right? All you have to do is provide a safe space for it and they'll tell you everything that they need to know. And most men are so relieved to have a space where someone has asked them, all you got to do is listen. Shut your mouth and listen. I agree. I, I agree 100% because I'm listening <laughs> to a book called, uh, I think it's called Winning with Friends. I think it's by, uh, I, I forgot, it's an old school book. But he was mm -hmm. saying in order to win people and win friends, you have to be a good listener. You have to make it about that person. That's even like in selling and marketing, right? It's about that person. It's not about you. It's about what they want, what they desire. And like you said, I think when women go on dates, they talk too much. Yep. Amen. You got my vote. I'm not going back. They talk too much. And then, you, and then they're saying, well, how did I fall for it? You talk too much. The man was going to tell you. And sometimes, look, we do this too. We give them the, the cheat code, right, for us because we're not listening, right? Shut your mouth, girl. Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't bet him with your mouth running. <laughs> 
Yeah, because women will say men aren't emotional. They don't have the right words like that. But have you ever seen a man watch a football game? Yes. Have you ever seen a man sit on the couch with his homeboy and hear how they talk? Have you ever been at a sports bar and heard two men talk about sports? Men talk. Like yes. you said, it's about having that safe place to listen. And are you willing to listen? That's it. That's it. Giving them the safe space, being willing to learn and not make what they've said something else. If you don't understand, ask them, you know, well, tell me more about that. I don't understand. I always say I'm willing to be wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Because Sean, I'm tired of getting it. I'm tired. I want to win at life. I want to win at the game of marriage. Mm -hmm. I just want a good teammate. That's mm -hmm. it. I'm going to knock it out the park because I want to learn, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and it's not about me when you get tired of, it's not about being right. And I think women have to do that too. You know, too many times we listen to try to defend ourselves instead of to understand. You can't understand. You got this whole thing going on in your head about what he didn't, didn't, didn't. And now you're responding incorrectly because you didn't even hear what he said. You're too busy doing this in your head, right? You have to be tired of, you know, trying to win the argument. I don't even care about being right anymore. I just want to win, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So it, you have to get to that point. I think men and women have to get to that point, you know? And that includes some women. It's fine. You got five degrees, but at night between the wee hours of one and five, you crying in your beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those, I heard a guy say this one time, those are measures that men use to gauge with other men. When we talk about degrees and money and stuff like that, because when you meet a man, we always ask each other, what do you do for a living? Yes. As if that defines you. Yes. yes. But women, when, when y'all talk, it's like, oh, you got kids? Oh, you got, you know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. And maybe it's changed a little bit by today's standards, but I think a lot of women kind of use more masculine traits than feminine traits. You actually, you can get the man you want by being more feminine. Mm -hmm. Come on, boy, you preaching. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, I always you tell preaching. my wife, that's one thing I loved about her is her femininity. Can yeah. she be a bad chick all by herself? Of course. She got her degree. She's a nurse. All of those. Yeah, of course. I didn't marry her for those things, Stephanie. I don't care. Less. I, you can make $500,000 a year, Stephanie, drive the coldest cars and all that sort of stuff. I don't care about that. I just want to know, can, you can be a, a cashier at Walmart. And shout out to Walmart. No shade. Right. But if you you cute and you got a nice little, you know what I'm saying, and, and you respect me and honor me, shh, man, I'll take her any day. You can keep your five hundred thousand dollars. I don't care about that stuff. I can and make my own money. That part, that part, that part. And if you're a real man, you're already gonna do that anyway. You're not gonna even include her five hundred thousand. I think what you were saying, and I love the way that you said it, Sean. Thank you so much. And you can tell I really love the way that you are honoring and loving your wife. Because it gives us women that want that hope that that does exist, that men really do want our femininity. I think with the whole women movement, women's movement and us getting, you know, now black women, we're the most, you know, with degrees and going to school and stuff like that. You know, but with all of that, it's taken away our ability to tap into that femininity. That's number one. Number two, it's not been valued or placed in a place where we see that men are saying that it is of value. And maybe that's the big secret, right? They're not letting us know how valuable it is. So we tuck it away or hide it away, right? And now we are the men, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're talking about what do you bring to the table? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. What do you bring to the table? Yeah. Right, right. Right, right. and then that's where you get like the whole like pretty woman syndrome, right? Where a woman who doesn't have anything is with this, millionaire because he wants her femininity not a degree that's right and, and if you're doing those things that's cool shout out to you i shout right. out to all those who's degreed up and i get it but i once heard that the reason black women are failing in a relationship area is because so much time is invested in mm -hmm. the degrees so much time other ethnicities they teach their kids or they they daughters and stuff to 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 put themselves in a position to get the man that they want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. i'm glad that you said that and i think when we get to a place where 
women understand positioning themselves to get around a certain caliber of man that you want, then you can set yourself up for really what you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you want a, um, an athlete or whoever, if you want a whoever, you have to position yourself in in that area. Um, and I think it's important that when we do these things, uh, she puts herself in a in a better position to win or even to get what she wants. I, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I will say this raising girls like I've always so you can yes to put yourself in that position to focus on who you are and your femininity because it's almost like and correct me Sean from a male perspective it's almost like it's a scent it's almost like it's a scent and it's an energy that you give off um, and men become attracted to it just even in your passing right that there's something different about this one. I think that there it can even be like in your continence and how you look, you know, um, and then they're curious, right? Um, so, because sometimes people will say, I know it's frustrating to me if you're looking, you know, to date, um, where do you go to do that? You know, I'm not hanging out at clubs, you know, um, so that can be frustrating to say, put yourself in that position because women are saying, okay, well, where is that, right? And Go ahead. Home Depot. Home you Depot. want a man with a house, you can go to Home Depot. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Look at Sean putting a girl on game. Hang on. <laughs> People that rent don't go to Home Depot. People with, with property go to Home this Depot. This is true. <laughs> Ladies, Home Depot. Yeah, Home Depot, know. Lowe's. Okay, Sean, give us another one. <laughs> yeah, you know, so you got to go to those places. I want a man that got his own stuff. Okay, well, that's where he is. Yeah. Um, I mean, actually, you can meet somebody anywhere. It's it's really about, again, just positioning. Or you can just be out and about on mm -hmm. your day, and you just run into somebody. Boom. Mm -hmm. You know, you weren't thinking about no man. You was trying to get something done or whatever, yeah. and then you came across whoever. Yeah. So I just think it just depends. I mean, I met my wife on Instagram, mm -hmm. and I always tell people, and people come for me about this when I say it, it's the whole conversation right. but i tell people i met my wife on instagram i looked at all her pictures and all her pictures she was fully clothed nice she, she had on all the clothes so <laughs> you don't have to, so you don't have to the way you said that <laughs> so you don't have to show tna to get you a man i mean right. you know what i'm saying he he know he didn't already looked <laughs> he's um, already undressed her right <laughs> yeah he already know you know what i'm saying so it's really how you carry yourself and yeah. it isn't about having a man. It's about having the, the man for you. Yes. What man is for Stephanie? Not yeah. everybody's man. You know, Cause I, and I, I, and I put this on Twitter. I tell people just cause he's a good man. doesn't mean he's your man. Come on, Sean. Come on. He that can part. be a good man, but that's not, he, he's not yours. So he can be a good man and y'all still get divorced. Oh, God, that hurts, Sean. Really? Oh, you know what I mean? Wait, wait. Give me a minute. Give me a second. Oh, that you hurts. Have to know who works for you. Oh, you have to talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, and still get divorced. Two good people getting a divorce. Two good people getting divorced. It's all too common. It happens. Man. You just have to know, you know, are we friends? Can we get through tough seasons in life? Because there will be tough seasons. And one yeah. thing I learned too, Stephanie, is when when we get to a place where we can own our faults. Because yeah. I realize, and I'm talking about even in my marriage, right? When my mm -hmm. wife and I, when my wife and I, when we fall out, we have situations. If I'm the one that did something bad, I just own it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be defensive. Just, mm -hmm. you know, what what can I do? to be better how can right. you know what i'm saying because what's happening is you're unarming them you're breaking the dance and i always mm. tell people that you're not doing the same dance over and over again because she know you're going to be defensive she know you know she's going to be cussing so y'all have trained each other for a yes. certain dance yes i like that yeah so unarmed so break the dance do a different dance by mm -hmm. owning your issues because she already know he defensive he ain't gonna never own up to his stuff when you own up to it, you break the dance. Now she's looking at you like, uh, I don't have no words. 
And not just that, but I'm going to tell you secretly from a female perspective, you could not be sexier in that moment when you can own your own crap. Okay. I'm telling you, Sean, I'm putting you up on game. Ask your wife. I'm just saying, <laughs> ask her. I dare you. Okay. When you can do that, not only are you more attractive, right? More appealing, but that something inside of her that needs to come under you, right? Because you are over the household and over her. She is so willing to get under you. It is ridiculous. Do you hear me? You want to shut up a woman? Be able to own your stuff, cover her, admit that you're wrong. And she, all she's going to say is, yes, sir. <laughs> That's a tweet. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's real. <laughs> Stephanie, this so, has been a phenomenal show. I want to ask you one question before we go. Yes. And this is no trick question. This is just just give me what you feel. Mm -hmm. Is it easier to love yourself or love someone else? Oh, love someone else. Okay. Why? It's easier to love someone else if we're just being honest. Oh, yeah. Sean, you're doing this to me. So it because because of everything that we're talking about like you have to look at yourself you have to sit with you right and especially that naive nice girl like Danaea right she poured everything she had into Derek it was easier for her to love him and place him on the pedestal. We were talking about the whole woman on the pedestal. Now you have a, a dynamic that's now the opposite, right? <laughs> He's the one on the pedestal, right? He the girl, she the guy. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, and, and we see what a disaster that that has been, but especially for the nice girl, for the one that feels out of place and maybe even for the nice guy, right? Who hasn't come into his own. If you don't like yourself, you don't like who you are, you know, you don't see the beauty in your own self. You haven't embraced your own flaws, who you are, you know? Heck yeah, it's easier to love someone else. And then you're justified in it because you're saying, well, we're supposed to love other people. Mm. But you can only love someone else to the extent that you love yourself, right? And that's where the victim, the victor becoming the victor that's where you are held responsible for what you do. Your job is to fall in love with you. Your job is to fix you. Your job is to be honest with who you are. And until you can look in the mirror and smile and not break down and cry, you know? I mean, have you ever just sat in the mirror and just, I've done it. You sit in the mirror and just stare at yourself. Just be quiet. Don't say nothing. Just look yourself in the eye. That's it. <laughs> Don't be fixing your hair. Don't be fixing your lipstick. Just look at yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's real. Until you can do that, you know, and you can smile and laugh and feel loving and kindness and grace towards yourself. <laughs> you ain't got no business loving nobody else. But it's okay. If you break down and cry, that's the beginning. It's mm -hmm. to break down because now you're looking at all your shit, mm -hmm. all your stuff, right? That's and it's right. a beautiful thing, right, Sean? I mean, it's it a beautiful is. thing. It is. Lo love your neighbor as yourself, right? That's it. So as you just yourself. At that part. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. You got to come first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, it's yeah. easier to love somebody else every single mm -hmm. time. Yeah. You know? And I, and I tell people that I dated people according to my self-confidence. Wow. Really? <clears throat> yeah. If I don't have the self-confidence, I'm not going to, and no shade to the ex-wife or whatever, I I didn't have confidence when we got married. I have oh. confidence now that I'm remarried. And I think also, Stephanie, because I'm more honest with myself. That part. And I tell people, look, especially single folks, we're all broken. Yes. Just, just, just pick, take your pick. What's that one song says? Every rose has its thorn. Yes. You know yes. Yeah. yeah, everybody got it. People trying to find these perfect people, and if they if they if they find a perfect person, they're not gonna want you. Oh, Sean. So, but anyway. Okay, I have told you before not to talk to me like that. They're not gonna want you. Wow. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. 
That's good. So any closing comments, any, 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 well, first of all, let me say this. I, de I want to acknowledge you for being as honest and transparent as you are. I appreciate that. Um, and I also want to acknowledge you for being transparent about, you know, the marriage and, and, and the divorce and yeah. just where you are in life. Like, I appreciate that because very, we looking for transparent people in today's culture. Right. Um, I think that's something that we need and, and you definitely have that. So continue to do what you do. I just want to acknowledge you for those things. And um, thanks again for being a guest. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you, Stephanie. Um, and I will say this. So thank you for that, Sean, because remember, we met, I think, in the pandemic on um, one of the subjects in Clubhouse. That's how we kind of yes. connected. Yes. And so it was through some transparent conversations, right? Like yep. we're having mm -hmm. now. We just kind of yep. kept in touch. So thank you um, for, for being there. And um, I guess like a lot of people, you know, a lot of people make connections they otherwise would not have made had it not been for the pandemic and reaching out right to those platforms. So um, you can reach if you'd like to get in touch with me. Um, and I will say this as a mental health advocate, one of the things that I started doing for those that are interested and are asking, well, you know, how can I get more involved? You know, we have this whole epidemic, it seems like, of mental health, right? That we that the war has been, you know, the the battlefield of the mind, right? Mm -hmm. Um and so one of the ways that I chose to kind of do that is not only am I, you know, going to therapy, but um, I decided because too many times in our culture, we say, well, I can't afford that. Right. I got a bill to pay. I can't mm -hmm. do that. We don't value the help. You don't value it because you've not had an experience. Right. Usually after people have an experience, then they can place a value on something. Right. Mm -hmm. And so and for black people, it's either Jesus or the bottle. That's it. There's no in between, right? right. So um, what I've decided to do is that, or what I started doing is that when I would tell people and you know share my story and recommend therapy, and I have a great therapist. Oh my gosh, shout out to the Davenports. Yes, sir. Scott and Jennifer Davenport are great. Um, if they couldn't afford it and they'd be like, well, I'm not really sure, I would give them the link. They make the, the appointment and I pay for the very first session take away all excuses right so you got the help you have a good referral and it's not going to cost you a dime mm. it's like paying it forward right yes. and that. so um i'm thankful because <laughs> you don't think that those things will help but i've probably i want to say if it's not between 20 to 30 different referrals mm -hmm. you know just people that can see and as people can see that you are now practicing what you preach and you are truly a better version of yourself. Now they're attracted to you and say, what did you do? And my recipe, let's say this, that what I did in my recipe is not going to work for everyone. The right. one thing that will work for everyone is for you to develop a relationship with God yourself, right? Pay attention to how he speaks to you. Um, I know my daughter, she hears him through dreams, right? Um, and signs. For me, it's usually a theme in life, right? Certain mm -hmm. things that come up that you need to do. So you need to pay attention as to how he speaks to you, but definitely develop a relationship with God and that's going to work for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so I will definitely say that. Um, but um, yeah, I'm sorry. I just forgot my thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> But to answer, but to answer your question, if I can just go over eight different things that one person can do to overcome, because we don't want to just put the spotlight on the perpetrators, right? Mm -hmm. That we want to say how you can come out of this because they've had enough spotlight, right? There's been enough. They have enough things that, you know, have glorified them on this platform. So one of the eight ways or there are eight ways that I've overcome. And like I said, that was through my maturity and relationship with God, learning to love his word and embrace the stability that comes through it. Right. The second thing was joy. Find what brings you joy. For me, it was dancing and singing. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to have an event. There's no there, there has there is no event for you to just dance and sing. Do it just because it's OK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go to a dance class. Learn how to sing if that's what you want. And if you can't sing, it's OK. <laughs> it's OK. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is purpose. Find your purpose. For me, it was writing and having conversations like this, getting to know people like Sean, right? Mm -hmm. And that there are other people that are of like-mindedness in the world and you find your village, right? Mm 
The next thing was therapy, right? Learning more about me and how I work. Take the focus off of them. What's wrong with you? Um, learn what you need. The next thing was replacing your playlist, the soundtrack of life, right? Music is a soundtrack of life. And I heard Willie Mo Jr. say, if music is a soundtrack of life, you better have life on that soundtrack. <laughs> so replace your songs instead of a whole bunch of sad love songs replace them you know with songs that have joy right they have praise and worship um i love earth one and fire old school right frankie beverly and Mays, you know something to make you just feel good for no reason at all right one of the songs that helped me through was better by hezekiah walker if you don't know it look it up right <laughs> It's, it, it will lift you like no other song, right? Mm -hmm. But that was one thing I did. The next thing that I did was for women, take a bath instead of a shower. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. We're talking about femininity. Take a bath. Be kind to yourself, right? And, and just take care of yourself, you know, in terms of like, I don't know what it is. It's something different about a bath and being kind to yourself versus a shower, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one thing. And then like your bedding, you know, your room, take a room and maybe even, you know, redo that room, right? Make it a place of safety, peace, joy, tranquility, a place where you feel comforted. If you have PJs, put on silky PJs, something that feels good against you. If you feel better, then you can kind of be better to other people, right? You can embrace that femininity. Mm -hmm. So um, those were some things that I did and I continue to do, but you have to be kind to yourself first. Like you said, learn to love yourself and the rest of it will radiate. Yes. Love it. Well, Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you uh, connect with us. Make sure you leave a rating and review. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a rating and review. we will love to hear what you have to say. By doing so, we'll put you in the drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Hit the subscribe button. If you are watching this via YouTube and leave a, a comment below, we'd we'll love to hear what you have to say about today's uh, segment. I'm pretty sure it's going to be some interesting comments. So leave a comment below. <laughs> this is Sean Heineman with special guests. Stephanie Lyon. Sorry. And you can reach me on IG at <laughs> you can reach me on IG at Steph 5114. <laughs> OK, awesome. And I'll leave that in, in the description below. All right. Brave Hearts community. Take care.